Sometimes, folks, we need to have adult conversations and put the uncomfortable truth out there. We need to say the quiet part out loud, and we're going to do that today with Anna Kelly. Hi, Anna. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. So I gave you a little heads up. About a couple of days ago, I texted you the following quote because I think it's true. I think both are true. Uh, and I wanted to talk about both of them with you. And, and that quote was very simply, it's never been easier to get rich or stay broke. How does that hit? How does that feel? I don't agree that it's never been easier to get rich. Okay. I do agree that it's never been easier to stay broke. So we can right. tease that out a little bit. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Never is a very strong word. And yep. I try not to use never and always, although sometimes I do and then I'm corrected, right? <laughs> um, never is a very strong word. Yep. Do I think it's possible to get rich and there's big opportunity to get rich if you do the right things? Yes. Never okay. been easier? No. All right. Well, let's get to never. Let's do the one that we do agree with. Never easier okay. to stay broke. Uh, why, yes. don't, why don't we start there? So when you hear that, you know, what jumps out at you for reasons why it's never been easier to stay broke? Do you want to do one at a time back and sure. forth? Let's do one sure. at a time. Sure. I would say right now inflation is at unprecedented highs, leaving households 66 to 80 percent of American households living check to check to check and having no extra money to invest. Yeah, that's a great one. For me, it's to me, it's never been easier to shop, right? There was a time when you and I were growing up where we actually had to get in a car to go to the store. Uh, obviously, then came the internet, then came the mobile phone, the smartphones. It's never been able easier to shop. Uh, now you get targeted ads and you can, you're can you buying stuff on Instagram when you're you know doom scrolling or whatever. So again, we've we've made it so easy for folks to shop. Um, that's one of the reasons it's never been easier to stay broke. What do you got next? Absolutely. And kind of piggyback, piggybacking off of that, I think um, maybe never in a long time seen so many people sad and depressed and disconnected from real relationships. And yes. so they go out and spend stuff to kind of self-medicate and therefore yeah. they live well above their means because they're constantly looking for the next thing to bring them some temporary joy. Yeah. I, I love that. Uh, the next one for me is buy now, pay later, right? Again, when we were growing up and when I had my first job in retail, we used to take checks, then it was credit cards. Uh, now it's buy now, pay later. Uh, it's just so many different ways to buy stuff that you can't afford. And you just keep layering on debt on debt on debt. And um, yeah, it's, it's not good. Buy now, pay later is just one of the most disgusting things that we've created in the last, I don't know, five years or whatever. Absolutely. And and this all kind of piggybacks on it. You know, it's all very related, but the fact that people, um, you know, just have racked up so much debt in every area of their lives, not just credit cards and layaway and, you know, buy now, pay later, which we've always had some form of for a very, very long time. But when you add up, um, you know, people going into debt to um, just to, to make ends meet, just to provide food on their tables, when food has gone up 25 to 30 percent, some categories even higher just in the last couple of, of months, people are not just borrowing for stuff, but they're borrowing just to survive. Um, they've got school loans that were forgiven for a while, and they thought that they wouldn't have to pay back. And now they do. So, you know, you add their their mortgage payment, their school loans, um, all the stuff they're buying, and then now having to go into credit card debt or work additional jobs just to, you know, pay for food and gas to get to work. Um, we're in a very debt heavy society. And when you're laden with debt and interest rates are going up, you just can't even pay off your debts, much less save anything to be able to get ahead and and invest. Yeah, it's it's. It I'll do one more, and then we can go to the other side where we actually disagree. I think it's very interesting to think about interest rates here. For the longest time, uh, rates were were zero, right? You got 0 0.01 in your savings or checking or whatever it was for a long time. Uh, those are going up now, but but interest rates on debt are going up more. Uh, obviously, you talked about inflation right out of the gate. It's just it's just hard to save, and if you can save, you're not you, your interest rates are you know, not meaningful and for a long time below inflation. So it's yeah. just so easy to 
spend. It's hard to save. You got, you're right about depression and keeping up with the Joneses. It's these mobile, these, these phones, if they're not used appropriately can be really a, the down, the cause of a downturn in my opinion. So let's go to yeah. the next one. Never been easier to get rich. So we disagree on this one. That's cool. Yeah. Um, tell me about one, one thing that you, uh, when, when I say that, why you would disagree. Sure. And, and I'll, I'll first, just cause this is on the top of my head. I don't want to forget it. I will say that savers have been punished for 15 years or, oh, longer. Yeah. or longer. So yeah. if you have money, um, you are being paid to just save it and not even have to do much if you don't want to take risk, you know, the risks that are that are out there today with for investors. So um, from the standpoint of I can put money in a CD or a treasury or a money market account and make, you know, four to five percent pretty easily from mm -hmm. that standpoint, it's easy to start making some money on your money if you have money. So I will give you that as a positive to your side, um, that it hasn't been easier to make money without doing much mm -hmm. in just in your savings account in a very, very long time. Um, mm -hmm. On the negative side, I would say this. Um, we've talked about a lot on this show. Most people do not have any financial education. Now, it's never been easier to go get that financial education, but most people don't have that financial education. No, so no, no, that's the, that's the, that is my number one point. <laughs> the information has never been easier to get it. That's now true. you have to do some filtering because there's lots of charlatans, but damn it. The information is when I was a teenager, I had to get on my bike and go to the book, uh, go to the library to try to find books. And there weren't many. Right. I would try to find right. biographies and all of that. Then came the internet. Now again, mobile phones, YouTube. Yes. In, my dude, my Instagram feed is awesome. It's full of positive people doing, right. talking about what they're doing. Dude, it's never been easier to get the information. Yeah, that part I completely agree with. So, so I think we we have a lot of agreement in there are still ways to make a lot of money, right? There's still huge opportunity in this country to make a lot of money. I just don't like the word never. You know, that's that's my oh, thing. I because love I love that word never because it is. It's like never it's say like, never again. No, no, I, no I, <laughs> but, I know where but, you're coming but from. But yes, there's so much information. You know, at the same time, I think that information can also be negative and cost For people sure. to lose a ton of money because. Because you have to be so careful who you follow. And, and I'm going to say this as a commercial real estate investor. And, and same thing. Look, you, you had cryptocurrency. All these people lost billions of yeah. dollars, I think. Yep. Maybe it's hundreds sure. of millions in FTX going bad, right? Um, lots of people lost in syndications by new people that thought, you know, they, they went to a seminar. They decided mm -hmm. to all invest together. They followed, you know, what they were taught on the internet and it didn't really work out in person, right? Because um, they didn't know what they didn't know. So you have to be very careful. It's it's sure. easy to get that knowledge, um, but there's also a, a push for taking more risk than what people should take. So mm. I think that- um, people make really risky bets, assuming that the economy is always going to go better and don't know how to make money when the economy flounders or when there's more risk. So because there is more risk today, um, and I see many people taking risks that they shouldn't, I think it's also never been easier to lose a bunch of money as it is to make oh, a bunch of money, I agree if, with that. even if you, you get some basic knowledge. So um, I, I think that's a cautionary tale that, yes, yeah. there's ways to make money, um, but understand risk. There is more risk today than I've ever seen in my investing sure. career. That's just the I, reality. And that's, again, why I say not never. Ne it's yeah, not no, I'm going to keep pushing. Easier. I'm going to keep pushing. Yeah. Let me try okay. again. We can so disagree. Next... That's OK. <laughs> no, of course it's OK. It's, it's wonderful to disagree. We both yeah. I learn when I have disagreement. Um, yeah, me too. The next one for me is, again, I'm thinking about myself. When I was a teenager in the 80s, I had to sell my hours. That was the only way I could make money, right? When I graduated college, I had student debt. I wanted to pay it off. So I had two jobs. I had a full-time job working in tech, and then I had a job on the weekends, and, and I think one evening a week. All of that money went to pay down my debt. So I had two jobs for a while. What I have, what I have uncovered over the last five years is completely a surprise to me is this device has allowed me 
to do what I do all the time, look at, read the financial news, share my story, to build a side hustle with no employees to over a million dollars. It's never been easy to take your take your passion, find your tribe, and make crazy amounts of money. It's never been easier. Yeah. From that perspective, yes. And I, I, I think, you know, when you look at for the few that that have the vision and the hope and the experience and something and the passion for that, you can make so much money on the internet by becoming known in ways that you couldn't before. So I will give you that. You know, now it used to be, you know, who you know that would help right. you get wealthy. Exactly. Now it's who knows you. And so if you can get on the internet and sell your stuff or sell your services. Um, yes, people come, can and do become wealthy very, very quickly. Um, they become rich very quickly, not necessarily wealthy. It may or may not last as algorithms change and things like sure. that happen, but there is definitely opportunity to make money. Um, I think of wealth though, Michael, as something that is lasting, something mm -hmm. that um, is, is substantial and that doesn't necessarily change with, the waves of you know what's popular in society, um, and so I think of things like hard asset, like real estate. What mm -hmm. we do, right? Um, is it as easy today to find properties that are going to cash flow and go up in value as it was ten years ago, five years ago? No, it's not. Um, Interest rates are higher, prices skyrocketed to the point that in many markets, values are flat and really don't have a lot of upside. Um, mm -hmm. As we're coming down from a peak cycle, you know, heading toward, you know, a trough of some sort um, before we have, you know, probably a decade before we reach another peak, um, in my estimation. And so um, it's harder right now to start out in real estate and get wealthy mm -hmm. as quickly. However, yeah. with that said, I think that it's going to get easier when you have a bottom. And when mm -hmm. we have the bottom and rates fall again, I'm going to tell you that it's almost never been easier to mm -hmm. make money in real estate. And so, you know, you have to understand where we are in a market cycle. So part of why I say not never been easier is because right now it is hard. You have to do a lot more work mm -hmm. to find that deal. And you agree. can find deals. I just put a property under contract today. Um, so I won't say too much about it yet because it's not sealed, signed, and completely delivered. Um, but we have a verbal agreement. We're working on you know, executing a, a contract for a single family house, Michael. And I haven't bought a single family house in five years. I think it's yep. been five because I've been mostly focused on commercial. Um, so people can't say you can't find deals. I just found a deal. And I have a private money lender who's giving me an interest rate that's incredible, that's going to make it cash flow really, really well. And it's a mm -hmm. deal on the MLS. And I went in the day it was listed, negotiated with the seller, called a private lender. I'm making a good cash flow. I have good upside. So there still are very good deals to be done today. But it is harder today um, than it was a couple of years ago. And I think it's harder today than it's going to be in a year or so. So, um, all right. You know. So, so really where I see us kind of circling this is, and, and I will agree with you, the easiest time to get rich. Say that again. I'll agree with you. I'll agree with you. It's okay. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> I, I know it's okay. I like it. Little, little jab. Uh, what I hear you saying is Michael, you and I both know the easiest time to get rich is when you could buy assets at a discount. And Michael, yes. you know that that happens in a recession. Yes. Totally agree. That's, you know, yes. But here's the problem. Very few people have the muscle memory that you and I have to take action in a recession. Yes. Most people are frightened out of their mind and they're only conserving. Having Absolutely. been through the Great Recession, my best year in my market was 2010 Right. Home prices were down somewhere between 75 and 80 percent. And I kid you not, nobody was buying. Nobody. Right. I was buying out of the MLS with nearly 20 percent yield. Nobody was buying. Right. So that's 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 the that's. If you know what you're doing and you have the muscle memory. Yes, buying in a recession is great. I just know most people won't start in a recession and instead will go. Oh, I wish I did. I wish I could. I, you know, blah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. 
Right. And how many times have you and I said on this channel, you know, you have to look at real estate just like your advisors tell you to look at the stock market, dollar cost average. There is There are ways to make money and in any market. And so whether it's the best time to buy real estate or not doesn't really matter. It's always a good time to buy real estate, but how you buy that real estate is going to be different. And there's different times. So such as right now, you know, lending is still fairly easy on residential real estate. It has tightened up a bit, um, but there's also a lot of private money on the sidelines waiting to yeah. find places they can safely park their money. And so prices may be high, inventory may be low. There are certain markets where inventory is really ticking up. And so there's a huge opportunity for motivated sellers already. Um, when you have a recession, Properties are plentiful, but credit tightens up. And so if you haven't already done the work in a, in advance to build those relationships um, with private lenders and hard money lenders, then you may have some, you know, a hard time doing deals even when you have that trough. And if you're scared at the same time, you know, you'll stagnate. So I understand you don't want people to do that. And it's important that you do the work. This is what you say every day. Do the work. It's on your hat, right? You look for deals every day. Um I'll just share a little story, even this house that I'm looking at. I didn't look at any single families. I, I was like, you know, I'm still I'm still looking for multis that are distressed because I see big opportunities there. I wasn't really looking at opportunities. I decided two weeks ago, I'm going to go buy a couple single family homes and diversify a little bit and went and looked at a few properties. And in less than a week, I have one under contract, right? So you do the work and you start looking for what you want and you will find deals that Absolutely. are good deals for today. And if it can get better and you can refi when rates go down, great. Um, if you know rates go down, guess what's going to happen to residential values? They're going to go up. Right. So even if you're in a recession, there there's different areas that are going to be recessionary with real estate. And there's other areas that are so undersupplied, Michael, that values will keep going up even in a recession and your interest rates will be down. So don't be scared when everybody says run. That is a huge opportunity for you to make a lot of real estate, but there still is great opportunity. I just don't think it's the best time ever. But you and I agree fundamentally that it's always a good time to buy real estate. You just have to be patient, do the work, know your numbers and do good deals for today. Don't worry exactly. about whether it's the best time or not. Oh, love all of that. Anna, you're amazing. Where can people find you? Thank you. You can find me here every week on your show and on my playlist on your channel, social media, Anna Kelly, Ariamom, and for real estate coaching and consulting at AnnaKellyInvesting.com. Thank you so much.